Hello everyone, Melody here, mom of four in our blended family of six. And before we jump into today's video, I wanted to introduce you to my little friend, Mushu. He is a new addition to our family and we're still getting used to each other, but I think I'd like to think that he has accepted me or at least as much as he's going to accept me because I'm told his life is one of indifference. But today we're going to talk about my plan for next year for the bookworm. Um, if you caught one of my earlier videos, we were talking about doing public school for next year, but we're sticking with homeschooling. Yay! It will be my eighth year of homeschooling and she will be a seventh grader. So if you're interested in seeing what curriculum we're going to use for next year, stick with us and let's check it out. Okay, everyone, let's jump right on in to our seventh grade curriculum choices for next year. First, we're going to look at our choice for history. If you caught my video about our fifth grade choices, you will notice that some of the seventh grade and fifth grade choices are the same. And that's because some of our materials we go over as a group rather than having individual materials for all the kids separately. So the first thing I have is the history of us. We did books one, two, and three already. If you can hear that little pitter patter, those are Mushu's little claws as he explores the floor during my video. We will be jumping into book four, The New Nation, followed by book five, Liberty for All. Book six, War, Terrible War. And if we have time, we'll jump into book seven, Reconstructing America. I'm excited to use this curriculum for another year. If you watched my springtime video, um, I said that we were going to use Curiosity Chronicles Medieval History next year, but we are not going to use that material next year because I decided to use The Story of Science by Joy Hakim, and it is right here. Uh, it comes with the text, a student workbook and a teacher workbook. This first book is really covering the ancient history time period that we just went over in Curiosity Chronicles. The next book presumably covers the medieval history time period. And so in order to get a, all my ducks in a row and everything on the same page, we're gonna do Curiosity Chronicles medieval, medieval history the following year so that hopefully everything lines up and makes sense and reinforces each other rather than trying to do two different timelines at the same time. Our next curriculum will be lightning literature. I am going to continue with lightning literature for the bookworm, but we're going to skip grade six and go straight to grade seven. She will be a seventh grader next year. We did the grade five materials this last year for a couple reasons. One, because up to this point, I have taken both my children and they've done lightning literature together. So we're, we've always done the same grade and it's a little bit higher than Bean Bean, and a little bit lower than the bookworm, and then I can modify it to meet their individual needs. But we're taking a year off lightning literature for Bean Bean and so that she can do sixth grade next year. And we're gonna jump straight to seventh grade for the bookworm. We have been doing lightning literature as it comes out, which is another reason why she was doing the fifth grade because the sixth grade materials just came out. It wasn't available for us last year. So we're gonna do grade seven. And this is actually some of the original curriculum that lightning literature came out with. It's my understanding they started with seventh and eighth grade materials, then did some high school materials, and then went back and did the elementary years. So these are the books that are covered in next year's lightning literature program and it's set up a little bit differently it has three books in it rather than the normal two normally we'd have a student guide and a teacher guide teacher guide but this one has a teacher guide a student guide and then a composition literature workbook as well 
I will take a more in-depth look at this curriculum in a different video. But I'm looking forward to another year of lightning literature with the bookworm. The last piece of curriculum that I was waiting for in the mail has finally come, which allowed me to do this video in the first place. And that is the math program that we're going to be using. The Art of Problem Solving has some great materials for older kids, and then they have Beast Academy for the younger kids. The programs are all from The Art of Problem Solving, but they're very, very different. This math program, this is the teacher manual, and this is the student workbook. Again, I'll do a more in-depth on this one, um, but it's very different than any math that I've used before. It's heavy on the reading, and normally I would look at this type of math and I'd be that, oh, I would think that looks really boring. It's very intense. Uh, she'll be starting pre-algebra, as you can see. But ironically, the bookworm has informed me repeatedly she prefers boring. She likes it when she can just read the material. I don't know if this kid has a photographic memory or what, but she reads through material like crazy and she can recall the information in an insanely accurate way and so at my first glance looking at this material it doesn't have a lot of problem solving that they have to actually do but it has a lot of reading about the problem solving and so I think she'll really like it ironically this what looks otherwise boring she's actually excited to use and I'm excited for her to use it so we also have, uh, the last book that I have for you here today is It's Perfectly Normal. This is for ages 10 and up. This is what we are going to use as the spine of our sex ed for the next year. Um, I'm a strong believer in approaching all that stuff straight on. So we're going to take a more direct approach with that now. I have a little note here, my last curriculum. We have Rosetta Stone. For foreign language, she'll continue working in French. We'll do typing that she's been doing. Uh, spelling classroom, I'm gonna talk to her about it and see whether or not she finds value in that. If she does, I'm gonna sign her up for it. If she doesn't, then we might just pass on that this year. We're going to continue with Kiwi Crates. She was doing the Tinker Crates. She said they were a little bit too easy. And so we're gonna bump her up to a different crate that we will start again in the fall. And I'm looking forward to the Mel's Science Kits for us to be able to use and get some hands-on science activities. I really like the idea of having all the materials ready to go because when it comes down to it, if I need to go search and hunt for all the different materials for these experiments, more often than not, I get distracted or have too many things going on and I never get it all together. So that is totally worthwhile for us. The last piece that we will be adding into our plans is Crash Course, which is a YouTube channel that we really like. I'll let the kids decide what topic they're going to watch. The topics range, it's anything you can think of, history, literature, science, um, all kinds of things. So I'll let them choose something. I, we were doing economics before, they weren't really into that, surprise, surprise, but all sorts of choices. They also have a crash course, kids for younger students, if you're interested. I don't think they have as much variety as the regular crash course, but it's still a really good program. And that about wraps it up. The last thing we're gonna be doing is um, in place of states, we finished our states, memorizing all the states and their capitals. I can't decide whether to do presidents or countries. And I asked this question in my fifth grade curriculum video. And if you wanna give me your input on whether you think learning all the presidents and facts about the presidents or learning the countries or actually getting started learning the countries, given that there's about 195 countries currently, um, that's going to be a multi-year plan to get those done. Countries and capitals, geography, all kinds of cool things there. I'm leaning towards countries, but tell me what you think. Do you think it would be more fun to do presidents or countries or what's your opinion on that? As always, please take a second, like and subscribe to our videos. Ask me your questions and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you have a particular topic that you'd like me to hit in one of my videos, let me know. I will be doing a preview for any of the materials I haven't used yet, as well as reviews for the materials that I have used. As I get them out, let me know if they're answering your questions or if I missed something. Otherwise, I think that's all I have for today. 
Thank you for joining me. As always, it's my pleasure to share curriculum with you and I will catch you next time. Mushu, I forgot to ask, what do you want to learn next year? He's indifferent. <laughs>